I was really thrilled this morning when Michelle first, uh, you know, gave her her talk because that rolled up, you know, the airspace modernization roadmap effort in a nutshell. I was ready to close my computer and uh, head on home at that point in time. But I think that we've got a little bit more that we that we can discuss. I don't get down into the into the weeds on the data analytics like uh, Alma does. I truly truly appreciate getting uh, that deep. But what I want to talk about is. So we say roadmap, but what we're really talking about here, roadmap is a little bit different than a strategy. We are developing an airspace modernization strategy that will have roadmap embedded in that. So I'd like to talk first about how we develop that strategy. So if we could just go to the next one and we'll step on through these. So AMR, airspace modernization roadmap strategy, what do we start off with? Go ahead. We got to have a vision. So our vision is based upon the FAA priorities that come out of our uh, our flight plan. Um, that builds to, there we go, our strategic goals. So embedded in our flight plan are uh, several strategic goals. We've heard operational excellence. We view that uh, from an efficiency perspective. And then safety, of course, safety always being job one for the FAA. And then uh, from there we, um, develop our strategic initiatives to support those goals. So how are we going to, going to address those things? Um, Michelle talked about several elements of how we engage with stakeholders. I know that's always a, always a concern. Uh, on the efficiency side, we are committed in everything we do to use of uh, data and analytics. So we want to be a metrics-based organization that uses data. It's one of the reasons why I love everything that uh, Dave and Alma uh, you know, and Kurt have done because that's all data. Okay, um, it's metrics and you know that we've built that basis or that foundation for developing our strategy too. Um, on the safety side, of course, collaboration, industry and in, inside of the agency. And again, the use of uh, data and analytics. So always our number one priority. So now we've got a line. So we, we've broken up our strategy into um, different areas of responsibility. So above this line, we're talking about headquarters functions. So headquarters provides several, uh, you know, several elements of this. One is inventory optimization. I loved, you know, hearing that earlier today because, you know, we're talking about um, assessing which procedures are uh, due for removal. So we've developed a, uh, a tool that's going to help us with uh, optimization of procedures. It will flag procedures that are disused and may be viable for removal. Of course, you know, we're working with the uh, you know, VOR Mon on VOR Mon removal. That's one of our ongoing uh, ongoing projects. Also at uh, headquarters focus area, concept advancement. So some of the things that we were talking about earlier, we're talking about EOR, Mars, other advanced concepts that we want to uh, integrate into the future strategy, the future of our strategy. And then of course, the quantitative data. We view that as being a headquarters responsibility to develop that data and uh, you know, provide it for use below the line. So below the line, notice over on the right-hand side, we talk about prioritize through SALTS. SALTS, that's our vaunted um, service area leadership team. I've got a, you know, a couple of slides later on that we'll talk about that a little more uh, in depth. And of course, the you know, key factor for the service area level below the strategic initiative line um, starts off with safety. We've developed, you might have heard this term, what we call airspace portfolios. I've got a little bit of an example of that that rolls up the uh, quantitative and the qualitative data. So we do two elements of this. And I noticed Alma had the same thing in some of her slides too, was we look at the uh, quantitative data and then we make a judgment on the quantitative data using qualitative input, that SME assessment. In our case, we're talking about um, developing the strategy um, you know, through the service area leadership teams. That's where our uh, assessment of that qualitative data happens at that level. Uh, airspace modernization playbooks, that's a tool. And you know, some of this is you know, clearly uh, take off from uh, the way we did business in the Metroplex too. So we had checklists and playbooks and, and different devices that we used. Next, um, so where does that get us? This is all focused around the, the center, uh, the service center or the service area level. That service area leadership team 
led by the, um, the service center director um, developing, uh, using the airspace portfolios that we've developed with the quantitative and the qualitative data to feed information to that service area leadership team that can do an, an assessment of the, the needs in their particular service area and they then they make a recommendation to the OG as uh, Michelle uh, mentioned earlier. So the officers group will then make the selection of which locations um, we're gonna pursue for um, modernization projects. And notice I didn't say airport in here once, right? Because we're talking about airspace. We're also looking at those airports too. So our part of our consideration and this is informed by our engagement with uh, Alma and Dave and Kurt is incorporating those TBO efficiency metrics and system-wide efficiency uh, metrics into our process. So the, the efficiency metrics that we started off with um, were based upon procedure efficiency that was informed through the seven different metrics that RTCA gave us in 2012, and that was the top of descent to the runway on a particular procedure metric. So that's where we started, but we've evolved from that point. Um, after we get our service area leadership teams engaged, then we go to the next one. That's where we start looking at our roadmap. You know, we, we started off with uh, NSG one and two airports, that's 74 airports. So a little bit different than the 52 that we used in the TBO analysis. We've already integrated looks at the, uh, the airspace and we think through our engagement with Alma and team that, uh, you know, we wanna make sure that we give appropriate consideration of, um, you know, the TBO um, needs for a particular area in the decision-making process. And I think you'll see that when we uh, get a little bit further into the salts. Uh, and this is where we developed our, our airspace modernization roadmap. It's like I caught them all, I had to go. We initially, all of this said, Airport, but we've got it. We've got airspace um, is the way we've, we've evolved this. So a couple of more elements to this. We want to talk about industry. We could go one more. So industry. That's where you know Michelle talked about this engagement um, a, a, at a couple of different levels. So we've got the COO engaged with maybe your COO through that NAC level, and that's a congressional uh, tasking where he is as assessing what the needs of industry are at his level. Uh, that includes working with, you know, planners and strategists at the, at the company level. Uh, the NAC, we talked a little bit about that, the different NAC taskings. Uh, you know, I know that there's some concern that, you know, some of those might, that's old stuff. Um, from what I've seen today, some of, the, some of the input that we've received, and I'll, I'll talk back to 2009 and 2012, you know, RTCA tasking and ACT tasking, guess what? Some of those metrics are the very same. That efficiency metric, delay metrics, schedule metrics, uh, you know, time-based, use of time-based metering, some of those elements have not changed at all. They might be due for a refresh, and I think Michelle alluded to that, that we may take another look at that, you know, post-selection on exactly how we how we did what we did and what our met, what our metrics are. We're already committed to that, working with, uh, you know, TBO and with the uh, efficiency metrics. So um, certainly, when we get down into the executing on a project level, you know, we hold hands with industry, with our tech pilots to uh, to get that job done and develop the uh, the best procedures. Industry can mean you know many things done at that service area leadership team level, and I think you'll see when we we look at that particular slide that uh, you know we have several different elements and different ways that we connect with industry, and we talked about a couple of them already through the uh, you know NCF and uh, through the uh, CDM forum. So, next slide, please. Um, this is one of my favorite slides. I like to tell people this should be turned upside down because the priority is actually from the bottom up on this. It's the service area delivery point is what we want to be focused on to determine, you know, what our airspace modernization needs really are. So that's airports, facilities, and you've got to read airspace in here, which, which we'll, we'll see. We use the service centers conducting the analysis based upon the quantitative data that we've given them, the diagnostics, doing the qualitative analysis, and again, feeding that information through this uh, device we've created, the service area leadership team, uh, in order to determine what the 
priorities are for modernization at a particular area and then feeding that information up to the headquarters level. Headquarters function is strategic oversight. So past projects, you know, we talked about Metroplex. We could look at any other project level and say, well, that was driven from the top down. That was a headquarters gift to the field, which I know was well received and loved by, by many. Um, we're taking a different view of it in the way we've developed this strategy and we want to develop our, uh, our modernization projects. So high level look at what the uh, airspace modernization um, strategy is and on to the next slide. So what's in scope? Well, in the past, we looked pretty much at uh, SIDS and STARS. We did some approach work. Um, we're, we're, we stayed away from um, airspace, um, rulemaking airspace. We didn't, we didn't touch that in some of our past projects. For, the, for airspace modernization, we're saying the infrastructure includes all of that. So SID stars, it's not just PBN work. Uh, it includes approach procedures, airspace. It's a look at the in route structure. So what are, what are our uh, ATS route needs? And then we integrate our other capabilities. So TBO should probably be a big bold and up a little bit higher in here. So we'll, we'll have to uh, adjust that on here. And again, the other things, EOR, uh, multiple airport route separation, the whole, um, I'll call it the, the full Monty of things that we can do in airspace is what we want to try to address here. Next slide, please. Ah, this is the vaunted, um, you know, airspace um, portfolio page. And all this is, is this is a front page. A lot of work went into these dashboards. And when I say front page, well, if you look across the top and you see those tabs, this is the executive summary. Each one of those tabs is a much deeper dive into the, um, you know, the metrics and the analysis, the quantitative and the qualitative analysis that was done uh, for a particular airport. This is an early look at, uh, at DFW at Dallas. Um, if we start over here on the left, we want to roll up our quantitative and our qualitative rankings. So we start off with um, the quantitative and I'll, um, I'll go into quantitative a little bit. The last four slides here are, are, quantita are talk about the analysis. Uh, we look at the uh, operations, safety, procedure efficiency. So there is a ranking in a, um, of, the, um, of the airports. We use a heat map approach here. So you know, low opportunity to fix something might be red. Uh, a high opportunity to fix something would be uh, in green. We move from the quantitative rankings on down into the, uh, the qualitative assessment of both the opportunity of a um, airspace modernization project affecting change for whatever our identified challenges at a particular location, and then the uh, qualitative, um, efe the, I'm sorry, the <laughs> feasibility of making a change. Could, is, is that location ripe for this change? Uh, and there are a number of factors that we'll consider for that. So again, front page look, we look at the um, snapshot of the operations, we look at uh, facilities, and this is only what facilities on the bottom of this, you know, which facilities of what type are at a particular location. In this case, it's got, um, you know, DFW and, and Dallas too, and left field, so. Um, there are, there are a ton more, obviously. What we're really looking at here is which ones could potentially be impacted by an airspace modernization project. Bad thing about having engineers, the um, John Specken, who is the executive director of service centers, this, he comes from that world, and that was his area in Central. He looked right at the numbers there and said, I know that's a bad number. So, you know, many of these things that we've had to clarify that it's things that could be affected by an airspace modernization project. IFP roll up, um, the impactful projects, and then this is a summary. Some of this requires manual work by the uh, service center operations support group to roll those things up. There is an analysis sheet that they work for briefing the salts. And then if you dig down into any one of these, you know, colored items here, um, it will go to essentially the same place that, you know, that tab on the top will go to it. It'll give you that deep dive look at that particular quantitative or qualitative element in there. So a lot of work has gone into developing this page. Um, 
No, I'm sorry, Lee, I can't give you access to this particular page. It derives data from a ton of different internal sources, transportation database platform, you know, Iowa or IFP operations and airspace analysis tool, a number of, number of other internal tools. So I, you know, cannot grant access to this particular page uh, outside of the F. Service area what, leadership what, team. So who's what, on the service what area if we leadership? We came into the FAA and you just showed us when we're inside the FAA. I'm sorry, say that again. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is, I'm sure you're right, Lee. Absolutely. <laughs> it okay. was it was um, a tongue in cheek request. Okay. Uh, the service area uh, leadership team, service center director, he chairs it. These are all equals. These are the um, FAA executives in, in each service area who participate in assessing the, uh, the modernization needs and making recommendations on uh, modernization projects within their area. So although we may do, we do that quantitative analysis and you can end up with a ranking one to 74 out of that, but that's not the necessarily the way it plays out. And that's one of the reasons why I, didn't just, I don't display that is because there's a dis, this additional qualitative analysis that goes on to determine, you know, what the opportunity and the feasibility is for a project to, to actually be successful in a particular area. So that's why we have the service area leadership team. So there are our service units. Everybody knows what our service units are in the ATO, right? So we've got uh, mission support. You know, we've got our uh, director of air traffic operations. That's, uh, you know, in Wendy's organization, uh, tech ops. Um, over in system operations, we've got the deputy director of system operations. That's the AJR, um, you know, representative. Two other lines of business participate in this. So regional administration, and I think that's out of uh, policy and international. And then we've got the directors of airport uh, division. So they don't work for Tim, basically, is what that means. You know, they work for the for the administrator. They have their own administration um, they are they participate in this obviously they're key stakeholders and then you know one of their key functions is to make sure that they are in touch with all of these other elements on the on the right hand side the little yellow bubbles airports bargaining units because that is a key uh key factor in in our engagement for everything that we do uh the elected officials industry again so you know, whether it's the director of the airport, airports division, regional administrators have a tendency to be in touch with that air traffic. And we talked about SysOps um, having engagement with industry and their awareness of what industry needs are. So that's all rolled on up in here with the service area leadership team. So when they, um, you know, get a, they have their meetings, SALT meetings, and they assess what the needs are that uh, they can take all of that into consideration. Keep in mind, this isn't a one and done here. This is an enduring strategy that we're developing for doing business for modernization projects now and, in, and into the future. It's not gonna replace the 8260.43 process. It doesn't change the use of the instrument flight procedures gateway, you know, the validation and the prioritization of procedures that are, are um, suggested to the FAA through those devices, that remains the same. This is an additional element that'll fall underneath the prioritization as a national program when we do projects through this strat this particular strategy. Let's go on. So that, I'm not gonna read through the, you know, the, the latest update. It basically lays out some of the things that we've already talked about, you know, where we get our data, um, we talk about the, you know, how those metrics track, uh, where we get them from, uh, air qualitative data, the things that are considered underneath that, that qualitative data, which is a bunch. You, you know, real, one of the things that's been really valuable to us is that engagement with AJR and AJT on TBO metrics, you know, and efficiency metrics. So um, I thank Alma and um, Kurt and team, you know, for uh, informing us on that. Airspace portfolios, you know, I. I wish we could say we have the same problem being behind the firewall. If we click on one of those things here, it might spin for a while, but uh, we continue to develop it, refactor it, uh, make changes to it to, uh, you know, based upon the experience that we're having with the service area leadership teams. And then here was the bottom thing. This is the kind of the, oh, you got to read that bottom line down there. So our 
Michelle alluded to this. She said, we're going to pick two sites per service area. That's six across the agency to propose to the OG in October. And then it will be the OG, the officers group, to make a decision. Okay, that could be airports. It could be airspace. So it, we're, we're not going to um, be pre-decisional. I can't you know, let the cat out of the bag, even if I knew uh, what the SALT recommendation was going to be. But it does not have to be exclusively an airport project it could be involve airspace uh, at, at some level uh, uh, next so i'm going to go through these steps this is rider slides some of you sorry might... more questions so michelle said two sites you just said two sites i did um is that sort of a spread the peanut butter type of thing or was there some is there any latitude that maybe Maybe there you know, would be you, more might, than... you might end up with three so, in so, one service area versus that's a great two question. across the board. There, that's a great question. And, and as we've developed this concept, um, we're assessing TRACON airspace. So it could be more than one airport inside of TRACON airspace. So it's assessing that, that location and then making a determination, you know, what needs to be incorporated into it. Does that help a little bit? But could you have more than two sites so in a I, service they, center or service we? area? I you know that's entirely possible. I would think you would be looking at, you know, primary and a backup, you know, uh, recommendation. But at this point, we're targeting two per service area. And I don't know that that's spread, uh, exactly spread the peanut butter. It's, you know, a, an assessment of the needs within those service areas. And we want to make sure that we um, address two locations. So that, that's some of us simple airline people back here are doing some math. Yep, that's six. And that's a long time to get to all these places. Um, is there a possibility that this could speed up, that you could add more sites in the future? Or is there not even any thought to that right now? You just I, wanna... I wouldn't say that we've ha had any thought to that. Just, you know, like we talked about, there are already a ton of things in the gateway, um, you know, that we've looked at and are on request from the PVN clarification task that are being addressed. You know, whether it's, you know, Louisville Standiford, uh, you know, if it's Atlas, at, uh, you know, want an OPD arrivals, uh, you know, any, any number of things that uh, are still in the gateway in the clarification test that I think we could demonstrate are being still being worked. So other work doesn't stop. I wouldn't say we're, it's going to be a long time before we get to all of the other places. Uh, I, you know, I, I wouldn't, uh, you know, try to hazard a guess about that. I don't know that our objective is to get to all of those other places too. Some of the things, if you look back in that original you know, um, those RTCA documents I mentioned, some of the same locations we're talking about right now are in there. Okay, so 10 years later, we're still looking at it. Uh, we're still revisiting some of those locations. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so maybe I can help with this. Um, so um, as you've heard, we, we're trying to prioritize a little bit better. We're trying to be smarter, but it doesn't mean we're not stopping any of the other work at some of the other places, okay? But we're trying to prioritize a focus um, on particular areas in the service center doesn't mean that we won't do that in the future, look at more sites. But as you've heard, you know, Tim and others say we have a math problem, okay? So this is our first step at prioritizing. Listen, we've had lessons learned in TBO. We're going to have lessons learned in this as well. So it's going to evolve and we're going to figure more out um, going this direction. But just because we're doing this per service center doesn't mean we're not doing other work at other airports. Okay. Appreciate that. Um, again, four, four slides. These are the last four slides to talk about, you know, where that quantitative, what, how our, our process evolves, evolved. Four phases to uh, identify, uh, selecting a site. So first was that quantitative analysis. We based it on safety procedure efficiency and operations and you know we've done a, we can uh you know change the percentage and um you know basically that we have done that and they come out pretty much the same the need comes out pretty much the same from a quantitative basis i did not group provide any of the uh listing of the um, airport groups again that would be pre-decisional on my part to say you know that um, um 
New Orleans is the top of the list in some uh, on a list, which is I don't believe it is. So we didn't provide that information here. This is just the start of the identification of the uh, locate of the modernization locations. So that's the quantitative ranking. After this, we move on to once we have that, then we go into uh, the qualitative, which are phase two and phase three. I, I mentioned the opportunity assessment. So we're going to look at the factors that cause the you know, quantitative data and see what we can um, derive from that. Um, the, little, the little box on the lower right hand side with the heat map on it, that's one of those areas where if you drill down into the airspace portfolio page, you know, you'll get that additional information that's provided in there that provides a little greater uh, detail on you know, why it's assessed at that particular level um, you know, with the heat map. And then from this, you get a, a, a high level look at what the needs are at that particular location. We go on to phase three, which is our feasibility assessment. This is where we want to take into consideration, um, you know, again, phase two and phase three, take into consideration with the uh, SALT teams. Okay, what other factors are there that are going to uh, weigh on our decision making? Do we have other projects? Do we have resource concerns? Um, do we have, are we got a plan to do something with, uh, you know, TBO and uh, TBFM uh, adaptation at some point in the, in the near future that might um, change our, our decision to make uh, or to develop a project there. And we're looking at three, about three years, probably a three year horizon on this is where, uh, you know, what our cutoff is. So we'll look at these other categories. Um, again, as we drill down into the um, portfolios, um, you'll get a template that provides you with an assessment of these particular elements. And then when we get into phase four, you know, we'll, uh, you know, provide those recommendations on up to the OG. And once we um, get, a, get a green light from the OG, probably sometime next year. So we're talking 23, calendar year 23, we'll actually start scoping the project and putting together the teams to, um, to do the work.